I'm Janet Woodcock, and I'm the director of the Center for Drug Evaluation and Research at the Food and Drug Administration. Well, FDA approved 39 what are called new molecular entities. Those are drugs that have never been approved before in any chemical state in the United States. So we approved 39 um, in the 90s, in the 1990s, up to 53 were approved. I think that's the record. But this was a high number for the last 10 years. Well, I think there's a big confusion out there about approval of drugs and, and efficiency and so forth. For the last 20 years, really, the FDA's had the Prescription Drug User Fee Program. And that program uh, in the industry uh, provides, pays fees to the FDA, and the FDA has to meet various goals in response to those fees. And that's getting an answer, not necessarily an approval, but an answer to an application within a certain amount of time. And those times are 10 months for regular, uh, for um, priority applications and 12 months for standard applications. Now, We've met those goals over the years, uh, and though we have approved up to 90%, or over 90%, really, of all the applications that have been uh, submitted to us within those time frames. So there isn't really a problem with the FDA review times and, um, and that section of drug development. The real problem in drug development is what are the standards that a drug has to have when the application is submitted to the FDA. How much information on effectiveness has, has to be in there, and what kind of information, and how much information on safety, for example. And there are a lot of disputes about that. Uh, much of the medical community and some patient groups want more information, especially for chronic diseases. Some members of the pharmaceutical industry say those standards are too demanding and they'll decrease the number of drugs that may be available to the public. And so there's a constant push and pull between uh, enhancing drug development and enhancing the amount of information that's generated about drugs before they get on the market. This summer, Congress passed a law called the FDA Safety and Innovation Act, which had many things in it, including a reauthorization of the Prescription Drug User Fee Program, a new generic user fee program, a new biosimilars user fee program, and also breakthrough therapies provision. Breakthrough is different than fast track, and let me explain the difference. The fast track program is a designation that different drugs can get, and that um, gives them more attention by the FDA, and in particular, they can give a rolling submission when they send in their application. That means they can send in certain parts of their application early, say to manufacturing, and get it reviewed before the cl clinical data maybe might be submitted and reviewed. And that may allow the whole process to go faster. So Fast Track does provide more um, attention from the FDA and perhaps more speed. Breakthrough is different. Breakthrough is focused on the very early clinical development time. That is, when the drug has first gotten experience in people. And sometimes, especially recently, we're seeing drugs where they get into a few people, maybe who have a very serious disease or life-threatening disease, and we see a response that's never been seen before in that disease. A real game changer, something important. And we now are going to be able to designate those as potential breakthrough drugs. And if they're designated that way as breakthrough drugs, then the FDA will work with the sponsor, will sit down and figure out the fastest way possible to evaluate whether that early clinical signal that we saw is really true. Is this drug really a game changer for this disease? And what is its safety profile? To try and get it into the hands of patients and their doctors as quickly as possible, if in fact for a serious disease, it's going to make a major difference. None of the breakthrough products that we've designated, which have only been two, have been made public yet, although I would hope that soon some of them will be made public. But let's take an example of a condition 
where there's currently no treatment. And say if there's a, a treatment that uh, doctors are testing in a phase one trial, the first time it's ever gone into the patients. And say this is a neuromuscular disease where the people are becoming, say, progressively paralyzed. And we see movement, we see restoration of muscle strength you know, something we've never seen before in a disease like this. Well, if that were uh, remarkable enough, if we really saw, say, that people could move or stand up or walk that they couldn't before, then that type of advance would be designated as a breakthrough therapy. And the most important thing to do then would be to study that drug as carefully as possible and as fast as possible to see, did it really make that difference? Did that finding that we observed in a few patients, does that really translate to people with this disease? Because if it would, and say there was no previous treatment for that disease, that would be a real breakthrough. The trials that might be done for a breakthrough drug might resemble traditional clinical trials, or they could be quite different. For example, if you felt you saw an unprecedented improvement in a disease that is generally a downhill course, right? What you would want to do simply, we'd work, work with the sponsor, is to show that in more people, in more patients, when they got that drug, instead of going downhill, they actually improved and that improvement was maintained. That might not even need a control group because we knew that that disease is chronic and progressive and downhill. So basically the goal would be to see if it really improved a wide variety of people with a disease and that didn't do some other harm at the same time to make sure it was reasonably safe. And that might be the entire development program in a disease that lacked therapy and that you saw such a significant improvement. The breakthrough is really only for serious and life-threatening diseases. Some of the serious diseases though can last a long time. For example, you could see having a breakthrough therapy for Alzheimer's disease. Even though it's not an immediately life-threatening disease, it has a downhill course and a terrible outcome, right? Um, but also we might see breakthrough designations for cancers or other diseases that are actually more immediately life-threatening. Well, for cancer in general, uh, many of the drugs where there's controversies have pretty small clinical benefits. And in breakthrough, we're not talking about small clinical benefit that you would argue about. We're talking about something that really you wouldn't need to apply statistics to. We're talking about something that's really unprecedented. So say and you took people uh, with cancer, and it depends on the cancer of course, but with some advanced cancer where there are a variety of therapies available, but they only add you know, a little bit of life, they only add a little bit of response, and you treat them with some new therapy, and you see that their tumors go away, and there's some stability to that complete response over many months, all right? That's not a very long time in terms of doing trials, but for a cancer to remain in remission is, is quite substantial. So that type of finding in cancer would be one type of thing that might signal a breakthrough. Now that doesn't mean we'd approve it right away. That means we'd work with a sponsor to say, all right, you saw this response uh, of the cancer in a few people in your trial and it's been prolonged and it's been substantial. Can you repeat that? Right? Is that something that we can see in a larger group of people with the same type of tumor and see that the response is uh, also the, similar in, in that group? And that's the kind of thing we work with. In other cancers where there are multiple therapies available, obviously it would be more difficult to um, demonstrate that your therapy is breakthrough because it's way and above what is currently available, but that's the kind of thing we're looking for.